There are a lot of reasons that your FPV drone motor could get bent. It could be due to a faulty AC, or it could be due to an overload on the motor, or it could be due to some other reason. So in this video, we are going to see how to rewind this FPV drone motor. And without any further ado, let's get started. This is a DYS Samguk series 2400KB motor. This DYS motor don't have any glue and it will be very easy to remove this one. So first we have to remove the belt from the motor. There are lots of methods in which you can remove this e-clip like using a professional tool that is dedicated for this one or if you have a plier or if you have a screwdriver that also you can use in order to remove this one. Here we are going to use two screwdrivers. So place the motor somewhere secure. With the help of the two screwdrivers, you have to push against the legs of the e-clip and it will come off. When you are doing this, make sure you are not damaging the bearing by creating a pressure on it. The clip has come off from the shaft now. Keep it somewhere secure. Now you can separate the bell from the motor. We have removed the bell and now it is time to separate the base from the stator of the motor as it will be very easy to rewind it. Some of the motors have an epoxy glue here that fix the base to the stator and in that case we will have to use some epoxy glue remover or we have to apply some heat in order to soften the glue and then remove the base. But this DYS motor don't have any glue and it will be very easy to remove this one. So depending upon the motor, we have a lot of options on how to separate the stator from the base. Like you can put a long screw here and hammer it from the other side and that pressure will separate the stator. Or you can put four long screws here and tighten one by one and this will push out the stator from the base. Or you can use a bearing puller tool here that will pull the stator by pushing against the base. Or you can go ahead and rewind it without removing the base but it will be very difficult and a tedious task. Here we are using the bearing puller tool to separate the stator. We consider this as the most important and crucial step in motor rewinding as if it is not done properly you can damage the stator, the base, the bearing and it can damage the whole motor itself. The stator is pushed against the base to fix it there. So that's why we are using the bearing puller tool here and if your motor have an epoxy glue then this method will not work. You have to use an adhesive remover or you have to heat up the motor and then use something to pull out the stator. The base is coming off from the stator as we gradually tighten it. We have fully separated the stator from the base and now it is time to remove the old windings. When you are unwinding the motor, make sure you count the number of turns if you want to rewind it to the same QV. Here in this DYS Samguk series for 2400 KV motors, the number of turns are 10. Once the old windings are removed from the stator, now it is time to clean it with isopropyl alcohol. Now it is time to put new windings, but before that we need to make sure that the insulation on the stator is not damaged. If the old insulation is damaged, then you have to insulate it again by applying some glue or UV solder mask. If you don't do this and rewind the motor, then that will shorten the winding and it will burn your motor again. You can head over to this website to check the winding scheme calculator too. If you would like to generate the winding scheme for your motor, if you are having a different configuration. So you can type in the number of slots here, then the number of poles, and whether you want delta or y configuration, that also you can choose here. And then if you click the calculate, then that will generate the winding scheme for you. 
here you can see some uppercase and small case letters this indicates the writing direction the uppercase means clockwise and the smaller case means it's in anti-clockwise so it goes like this clockwise anti-clockwise anti-clockwise then again it goes to clockwise clockwise and so on we will be following the DLRK evolution delta winding scheme for the 12 pole 14 magnet motor starting with the pole number one in clockwise direction then moving to the pole number two in anti-clockwise direction and once that is completed we will be moving to the opposite poles here which are the seven and eight then on the seven we'll be doing counterclockwise and on the eight we'll be doing clockwise then the second phase the second phase we are starting with the pole number four here in anti-clockwise direction and then we move on to the pole number three in clockwise direction then once that is done we'll be moving to the exact opposite poles here which are the nine and ten uh, starting with the 10 in clockwise direction then we'll be moving to the pole number 9 in anti-clockwise direction then the last phase that also starts with pole number 5 here in clockwise direction and then we move on to the pole number 6 then in anti-clockwise direction then we will be going to the opposite pole here which are the 11 and 12 and the 11 starting with counterclockwise and then we move on to the 12 in clockwise so if you look at this pattern you can see that the starting are in one then four and five and if you look all two pairs of wires are coming out at the same poles so it doesn't create any confusion which wire should be paired with which one if you look at some different winding schemes you can see that different wires are starting at different poles and different wires are ending so it might be create a confusion which two wires will come out so in this case it doesn't leave any space for confusion as you can see that all two wires are coming out at the same poles so you can just pair them and you can solder the silicon wires there and that will be done you can also mark down the tooth of the stator it will make the rewinding a lot easier this is a 14 pole tall tooth brushless motor we are using the dlrk evolution winding scheme this is one of the easiest winding pattern because this doesn't create any confusion if you just look at the winding scheme you will see that two of the wire pairs are coming out at the same slot according to the winding pattern we are starting with the tooth number one by winding it in the clockwise direction there is a calculation that helps you to change the KV of the motor by changing the number of times but in this case we are going to rewind the motor back to the same KV. Instead of the original multi-stranded copper wires, we are using single-stranded copper wire here to rewind the motor. Again, this is because it will be very easy. Every time you complete one turn, make sure you tighten the copper wire by pulling it off and this will give you a clean look and the winding will look intact. Ten turns completed on the tooth number one, and now we are moving to the tooth number two, which is in anti-clockwise direction. After every two or three turns, you can push off the older windings to the inner side so that there will be enough space for you to put new windings, else, this can lead to overlapping and the winding will look really ugly. After the first turn, make sure that the routing is well placed. Now we are starting with the number 7 which is again in anti-clockwise direction.
Let's cut and remove the excess wire. We have completed rewinding the first phase and we are starting with the second phase on the tooth number 4 which is in the anti-clockwise direction. The second phase is also completed. Now we are moving to the third phase, which is starting with the tooth number five in the clockwise direction. By this time, you can see that two of the wires are coming out at the same slot or at the same slit. It will be very easy to solder the wires. That's why I said this is one of the easiest winding patterns out there. We have three pairs of two wires which we have to put together and does not create any confusion which wire goes to the which one because they are all coming together at the same slot. If you twist the wires like this it will be very easy to solder the silicone wire. Now it is time to put new silicon wires to the copper wires but there is an insulation on these copper wires that we need to remove. A lots of methods to remove the insulations like we can scrape off using a blade or we can get insulation removers from the market which also does the job very perfectly. If the insulation is not removed it will take a lot of time and a lot of heat in order to remove that insulation by directly soldering or pre-tinning the copper wire. Here we are going to use the insulation remover that we bought from the market. We are applying a little bit of the chemical at the end of the wires and leave it here for a few seconds. After that we can pre-tin the wires directly and put new silicone wire. See that we are able to pre-tin the wires very easily when we apply the insulation remover but if you are trying to do this without the insulation remover or the flex or even without scraping it off, it will be very difficult. We are soldering no silicone wires one by one. Now let's put heat shrink to secure the soldering from shorting. Using longer heat shrink for the side wires and for the middle one we are using a little shorter one.
let's add one more heat shrink to secure three of the wires together. Sure you insert the wires first, then put the stator back. Now it is time to put the stator back to the base. The so stator is aligned and inserted, make sure you apply some pressure and push it all till the bottom. Once that is completed, you can apply a little bit of epoxy or some other glue here so that the stator will not come off. Or if you want, you can hammer it down at the base of the motor without damaging the motor. We put the motor bell back and now it is time to secure the bell with the e-clip. Just insert the washer that came with it. Then align the e-clip and push it. Now it is time to test the motor that we have rewinded. As you can see that the motor is working. When you are testing the motor, make sure the motor is not heating up. If it is heating up, then there is some issue with the winding and you will have to rewind it again. So well, that's it guys. If you have any doubts regarding motor rewinding, you can let us know in the comment section. Thank you for watching.